I bothered him to sit on my bed for this video. I apologize, Sam. <laughs> Hello friends, it's Lisa and Sam <laughs> and welcome to a new video. So today I'm going to be talking about all of my favorite things from the year 2020. I did one of these videos back in 2019, kind of just a favorites video of everything I loved throughout the year and I wanted to do it again this year, especially when this year was not the best year. <laughs> There's now a cat sleeping on my lap so that'll be fun. <laughs> but basically what I was saying is yeah this year it was not a good year for a lot of different reasons, but there were still good things that happened, good things that I enjoyed throughout the year, and I thought it'd be fun to kind of reflect on the good things that came out of this year still. You know, obviously if the year went on the way it should have, um, I would have been mentioning concerts that I had planned and just in general things that I would have done this year that couldn't happen because of everything, but there still were some good things that happened this year and I wanted to talk about them. So yeah, um, I've done monthly favors videos throughout the year, so I'm kind of going to do it in a similar setup. I'm going to talk about music first, then like movies or TV shows or anything like that, and then we'll get into the more like miscellaneous random things throughout the year that I liked, you know, like skincare, stationary things, anything like that that will be later on. But yeah, let's just get into the music first. So the first album I want to mention is Folklore by Taylor Swift. This was a surprise album that she released in July. No one had any clue that she was going to do this. She didn't even know she was doing this until quarantine, I guess. <laughs> but yeah, she kind of dropped this as a surprise back in July. She announced that it was coming out that night at midnight and I love this album so much. I think that this is such an interesting album for her because it's pretty different from what she's done before. It's more of like an indie folk sort of thing. I still feel like it's kind of going back to her roots but in a more like mature way and I just really really enjoyed it. I also just love the storytelling within this album. Um, the fact that not every song has to do with her personally but can be things that she might relate to or things that she's heard about that she kind of took and wrote a whole song about and just the storytelling within this album is incredible. This album has been on repeat basically non-stop since it came out. I think this is such a special album and as someone who loves Taylor Swift and has been a fan of Taylor Swift for a very long time, to say that this might be my favorite Taylor album is a bold statement, but I think it's true. I just love it so much. Um, if I had to give like my few favorite songs off of the album, August, Betty, Seven, A List Affairs, and then Mirrorball, I think that's my top five. It kind of changes all the time, but those are kind of my favorites constantly. But the whole album is just so good. There is not a single bad song on this album. Every song is so good. It's just... It's a skipless album and we love to see it. So thank you Taylor Swift for releasing this in 2020. We all needed it. <laughs> so the next thing I want to mention is a few albums by a specific artist, but also just the artist in general this year became a big part of my life in 2020 and that's BTS. Now before we get too far into this, I want to take a minute to reflect on 2019 favorites video, Lisa talking and mentioning BTS because it's quite funny. <laughs> and the last artist I have to mention is one that I never thought I'd be mentioning, and that's BTS. Who would have thought? I'm not like a stan yet. I'm like not letting myself become a full-blown stan because I know if I like invest too much time into like watching their videos or listening to their music, I will become a full-on stan. BTS, they have a couple songs I really enjoyed. Maybe next year I will be a full-blown stan, but as of right now, just a couple of songs to mention by them. The way I said I'm not a stan yet, she knew. She knew what was coming. Honey, you've got a big storm coming. I just find it hilarious that I said I'm not a stan yet because I think I knew, we all knew, I was going to become a stan. It's just the way my brain works. I get obsessed with things and that's it. <laughs> but yeah, basically New Year's Eve, actually, they performed on the New Year's Rockin' Eve special thing and I watched it and I got so excited for them to come on and that's kind of when I realized like, oh, maybe I'm a bit more obsessed with them than I realized. <laughs> and kind of very beginning of 2020, I just kind of took the deep dive became obsessed with them, became ARMY, and I'm just so grateful and lucky that I did. They did have a few albums come out this year. So first and foremost, we had Map of the Soul 7 come out, and then we had the Map of the Soul 7 The Journey, which is the Japanese album. 
And then we also just recently had B come out. And I just love all of these albums so much. Map of the Soul 7 is definitely going to be an album that is so special to me because that was my first comeback. Obviously, like I was starting to get into BTS last year with Persona, but I basically was like, okay, I'm gonna stand. I'm now officially ARMY. We're getting into this. And then the Map of the Soul 7 comeback started. So it was very overwhelming, kind of going through all of their older stuff while also experiencing all their new stuff, but it was just so much fun and I was like, oh, so much of my happiness this year to them. BTS just did so much this year. Not only did they put out that much music, but they also were doing concerts like every few months, like online virtual concerts. They had quite a few different events and things going on to kind of help them keep sane, but also to have us be able to connect with them and to be able to see them in concert while everything with the world is going on right now. It was such a cool way to stay connected with them and when we couldn't see them like in person, but also like not even just that, the fact that I got into them this year and had so much music and content and just things to get invested in and to watch and to enjoy was just so exciting and it truly like kept me sane this year and brought me so much happiness and like I don't know what I would have been like this year like obviously like my mental health was struggling this year all year like everyone else is but I'm just lucky that I had BTS and everything that knew that they were doing but everything that I had to catch up on this year like they provided so many good memories and just a lot of happiness for me this year. I know this is quite deep, but I'm just very grateful for them and I'm just lucky that I kind of got into them this year when, you know, there was a lot of terrible things happening this year and we just were kind of in isolation and alone. I'm just very glad that I had them for a source of joy. But let's talk specifically about the album. So Map of the Soul 7 came out this year and it's just, it's excellent. A skipless album, if I may. The only skip would be On featuring Sia, but the normal On, excellent. <laughs> I don't even know if I could pick like a top five for this. We Are Bulletproof, The Eternal, definitely. Um, Moon, Friends, Friends, duh, Friends, hello. Uh, Zero O'Clock, and I, I don't know. I don't know if I can pick that fifth spot because they all kind of tie for that fifth spot. Like this album is so good. And I actually did a whole vlog when this album came out back at the beginning of the year. Warning, I was clearly a baby army still. I still hadn't caught up on everything that I missed because this comeback started like right when I decided to stand. So it was a lot trying to balance the new and the old stuff. But I did a vlog experiencing this whole comeback for the first time, album reaction, all that stuff. Um, so if you want to watch that, I'll have it linked in the cards and also in the description. And then more recently, they had B, which was released a couple weeks ago. It's now December 3rd when I'm filming this. So yeah, I love this album so much. I don't even think I could really pick a favorite off of this album. I know I love Blue and Gray, but then after that, it's just the whole rest of the album is just tied. I just, I love it so much. It's such a comforting album and I think something we all need right now with the way the world is. Um, it's just so good. So thank you BTS also <laughs> for providing comfort and happiness during this time. Also, I do want to say it is December 3rd, and so we still have a whole month of December for things to happen, and specifically, Kim Young might be putting on a mixtape by the end of the year. So if that happens, um, that's obviously a favorite too. It hasn't even come out yet. We don't even know if we're getting this year. He said maybe, but I don't trust him. I don't trust them. <laughs> but if that does end up coming out before the end of the year, that's a favorite. I haven't even heard it yet, but it's a favorite. I just know I will be sobbing over that forever, so that will also be a favorite, even though it hasn't come out yet. <laughs> so another artist just in general that I wanted to mention that I fell in love with this year is Tomorrow By Together or TXT. I love them so much. They do not have a bad song in their entire discography. Tell me I'm wrong. I'm not. You can't tell me that because I'm right. <laughs> they did have albums that specifically came out this year. Uh, the Dream Chapter Eternity and also the mini Sewed One Blue Hour album as well. But I think just in general, because I kind of discovered TXT this year, every album, everything that they have ever released was a favorite this year. I just love them so much. Every song is excellent. And they also brought a lot of happiness and joy this year. So I'm very lucky that I found them and started listening to them this year. One of their songs actually made it into my top five um, Spotify wrapped thing. Runaway or Nine and Three Quarters was my fifth top laid song of the year, which makes sense because I listened to that song nonstop. <laughs> So yeah, TXD, another favorite this year. We also have another album that I actually own. So that is Calm by Five Seconds of Summer. I'm sorry if there's a glare, I'll try not to do that. <laughs> but Five Seconds of Summer has been a band that I've been following and loving for a very long time, like 
since 2013, which is crazy to think seven years. That's I don't want to think about that. That'll make me have a crisis. <laughs> but this is their fourth album that they released, and I love it so much. I don't know if it's my favorite album that they released. I still love Youngblood so much, and also Sounds Good, Feels Good is just like, I was emotionally attached to that album when it came out, but I think Youngblood might be my favorite, but this one is still really good. I really enjoy it. This also came out kind of at like the beginning of quarantine. Like I think this came out at the end of March, so it was like they were kind of the first like album release that I experienced where there wasn't a lot going on because they couldn't go anywhere or do anything, but it still was super fun to listen to and such a good album. I feel like just the whole like second half of this album is my favorite. Um, we have The Best Years, Not in the Same Way, Lover of Mine, Thin White Lies, Lonely Heart, Hi. All of those songs are great. I also do love Wildflower a lot. It's just a great album. Um, the only song that I really like don't love is Easier just because I'm so sick of it. I listened to it way too much and now it's like it comes on and I can't, I can't listen to it. But other than that, it's a great album. I love it so much and I'm excited to see what they do in the future because I really like the way that the sound of this album was and where they're kind of going. So yeah, this was definitely a favorite as well. I have two more artists that I want to mention. One is New Hope Club. They came out with their, finally, their debut album this year, and it's their self-titled first album, New Hope Club, and I love it so much. New Hope Club have had quite a few songs released before their debut album, and they included a lot of those songs on the debut album, which was kind of a bummer, but then they released the extended version of the album with I think like six completely new songs and just kind of the newer songs and the extended versions are so good. I mean obviously the songs that they released prior to the debut album I love as well, um, but it was just really exciting to get a lot of new songs from them and for them to finally release their debut album was super exciting. I'm super proud of them, love them so much, and if you haven't checked out New Hope Club definitely would recommend. And I would say like any of the extended tracks are some of my favorites. Also finally getting YOY a studio version of that song is just, was just everything. I was just so excited for that. <laughs> and I think the last album I'm going to mention is Cherry Blossom from The Vamps. I really love The Vamps. I have kind of been like a very casual fan for a very long time, but just in the past like couple of years I've gotten like re-into them, and I think that Cherry Blossom might be their best album, or it's just like my personal favorite. I think it's so good. I think the direction of where they're going, I just love it so much, and I feel like Sometimes with their albums, there's a few songs on them that I just don't love as much as others, but this whole album is good. Like, there is not a bad song on this album. Glory Days, uh, Part of Me, and Treading Water are some of my favorites, but honestly, the whole album is so good. I definitely would recommend checking it out, especially if it's been a while since maybe you've heard something from the Vamps, because it's definitely changed a lot since, like, the song that they did with Demi Lovato, you know, Somebody to You, anyone remember that? a bop, but also this is very different and it's so good. So I definitely would recommend checking it out. So those were all of the things I want to mention that were like a big part of my year. That's the music that kind of made the biggest impact on me throughout the whole year. But I will leave my Spotify linked below. I have my top 100 songs of 2020 playlist and I will also have my own 2020 playlist. I put my own songs, like every time I delete a song from my current playlist, I put it in my own 2020 playlist. So it has every song that I listen to in the year in that playlist. So how many times can I say playlist? <laughs> but if you want to check out all of the music that I was listening to in the year of 2020, I will have those playlists linked below. But these were kind of the things that were like the biggest and most impactful things for me this year. So yeah, that's it for music, I think. So now I'm going to move on to the more entertainment section. So TV shows, movies, um, I have a podcast to mention. So let's just get into it. So this year I did not watch a lot of TV. I started watching the show that I'm going to mention in like April or May and it took me until November to finish it. And keep in mind this show has three seasons and episodes are really short so it took me a while to get through this show. But that is Avatar The Last Airbender. But to be fair, like if there was going to be one show that I watched in 2020, I'm glad it was this one because I loved it so much. My friend actually sent me a Appa stuffed animal, which is the little flying bison from the show. She sent me a stuffed animal and it's on my floor over there. I'd get it, but I have a cat sleeping on my lap. <laughs> but yeah, Avatar The Last Airbender was the only show I watched this year, but I loved it so much. This was a show that I know a lot of people talk about, a lot of people love, but a lot of people also grew up with it or watching it when they were growing up. And I kind of didn't know if I would enjoy it if I didn't have that nostalgic value to it. But don't even worry, 
I loved it. I was obsessed. I feel like even though it is technically like a kid's show, a lot of the jokes were actually really funny. Not only the jokes, but also just like the actual story and the messages were so entertaining and still things that you can learn from and enjoy as an adult. I definitely think that I will rewatch the show at some point. I just really enjoyed it. I don't know if I'm going to be able to explain the show well, but very basic information. Um, we're following the Avatar who has the ability to master all four elements. So air, water, fire, and earth. He can master all of them and then there's people who kind of specialize and are only able to do one thing. So it's kind of his journey learning all these different elements, how to learn about them, and also kind of this war that's kind of growing and you kind of know is eventually going to come by the end of the series. And that's like the bare minimum of information. I probably didn't even explain it that well, but it's really good and it's really cute and also just very emotional. Like I cried watching the series finale. I did not expect to get that invested in this show, but it's so good. There's a reason people watched it when they were younger and still love it and talk about it now and a reason why a 22 year old watched it this year for the first time and is recommending it and loving it. Like it's such a good show with such good messages and characters and I definitely recommend watching it if you haven't already. Um, but yeah, it definitely was a favorite of this year. So that was the only TV show, like I said, that I watched this year. So for movies, the first one I want to mention is Tangled. I had never seen Tangled before. I don't know how I've made it this far into my life without seeing Tangled, but I got Disney Plus this year and it was on there. So I finally watched it and I love it so much. It's definitely one of my new favorite Disney movies, one of my favorite Disney princess movies, definitely. I loved it so much. I cried so much watching this movie and I don't know why. I did tweet out like, is it normal to cry as much as I did? And a lot of people replied with, yes, it's normal. So I don't feel so bad about it, but I just thought it was super cute. I really loved the story. I really enjoyed the characters. I just really loved it. The soundtrack is great as well. And also just like, like Rapunzel as a character, I can relate to her. <laughs> and finally, seeing and understanding the context of the lantern scene was just life-changing. I just really liked it. I thought it was super cute. This is one of those movies where I was concerned that the hype and the love for this movie might have ruined it for me, but it did not. It's just as good as everyone is saying it is, if not better. So if you're late to watching Tangled, like me, definitely would recommend. It's super cute, super fun, and I loved it so much. And then we're back to Miss Swift. <laughs> Me somehow always brings it back to Taylor Swift. <laughs> but she released actually two different movie documentary things this year. So the first one was Miss Americana. That came out back in January. That feels like so long ago, but also not. I don't know. It's weird. Years are weird. This year especially is weird. <laughs> but Miss Americana is kind of a documentary just kind of following Taylor um, and the release of the Lover album as well as kind of reflecting on her career as a whole. And I thought it was super interesting. I thought it was really interesting to hear like her side of the story and like what was going on behind the scenes when a lot of the like scandals and just the drama that was always following her around, like what she was going through when all of that was happening. You know, she didn't just touch on the Kanye and Kim stuff. She talked about a lot of like the dating scandals, aka the media making it a big deal that she takes people, all of that type of stuff as well. A lot of like the Grammys, how she sometimes didn't get nominated or how she didn't get a Grammy or sometimes she did get a Grammy. Um, there's just a lot of different things that are a part of this documentary that I thought was really interesting to learn about. Obviously there were a lot of things I already knew, but there were a lot of things that I didn't know because I'm not Taylor Swift. I'm not behind the scenes. I don't know what was going on with her, you know, behind the scenes, behind the pictures, behind the videos, um, just kind of things that we as fans didn't even get to see. So I definitely would recommend, especially if you maybe aren't the biggest Taylor Swift fan and maybe hate on her or have hated on her in the past for certain things, I think it definitely provides a lot of explanation behind things. Um, not to say like Taylor Swift is a saint and she's never done anything wrong because like that's not true. She's a human being. But I definitely think it gives a lot of explanation and a lot of background as to what was going on and I just really recommend it's so good. I feel like if you are a Taylor fan, you probably have seen it already, but if not, definitely would recommend. It's so good. She also just recently came out with the Folklore Long Pond Studio Sessions thing, documentary, concert, I don't know what to call it, uh, on Disney+. Plus. <laughs> and it basically is just her going through the entire Folklore album and performing it with Jack Antonoff and, uh, 
I don't remember the other guy's name, but basically the people that worked on the album with her. But they basically are just going through and playing all of the songs off the album, but also in between, before they play a certain song, they talk about the inspiration, the meaning, um, how they came to create it and just kind of the background for the song and it was super interesting and super fun And I think it was really cool to get kind of the background information on a lot of these songs because a lot of songs are very much like storytelling based and I feel like it was really cool to hear Taylor's point of view and like why she decided to tell the story and like what it meant to her and how she interpreted it So I would recommend if you like folklore definitely give it a watch It's super entertaining super fun and also you get to hear folklore live and it's stunning. I cried few times. <laughs> and then the last thing that I think kind of could classify in the entertainment uh, section is a podcast and that is the Happy Writer podcast which is hosted by Marissa Meyer. Marissa Meyer is a young adult author and one of my favorite authors and I thought it was really cool that she started a podcast in quarantine. I think a lot of people started podcasts in quarantine <laughs> but I really enjoyed this one. It's really interesting to hear kind of the behind the scenes of writing a book, what it's like to be an author and also she kind of like interviews different authors every episode and they kind of just talk about their newest release or kind of what goes on in the writing world and I don't know I just thought it was really interesting as someone who very much loves to read and loves getting behind the scenes of why people write the books that they write and like the stories behind them I thought it was really interesting. I actually haven't listened to that many episodes I think I've maybe listened to like 10 max but it did just start back in March so it hasn't been going for too long I don't think I've missed that many, um, but I definitely want to get caught up because I really enjoy it. I really enjoy hearing from Marissa Meyer and other authors telling their stories, the background behind their stories, and kind of just different writing book related things. I just think it's really fun and really interesting, um, especially if you like books, I would recommend. But yeah, that was kind of the only podcast that I really started listening to. I'm not a big podcast person. Um, I listen to My Favorite Murder and the Happy Writer podcast. <laughs> and that's it. <laughs> so I didn't have that money to recommend, but I do really like The Happy Writer. I think it's really cool and definitely would recommend. Okay, so now we're going to get into the more miscellaneous random things. So the first thing that kind of became a big part of my year was journaling and stationery. I kind of became a stationery fanatic this year. <laughs> so last year I started bullet journaling and I started out with a cheaper journal from Michaels because I didn't know if it was going to be something that I kept up with. So I didn't want to invest in a more expensive um, but higher quality journal just from the start because I didn't know if it was going to be something I kept up with. But considering I did it from July until the end of the year and really enjoyed it and wanted to keep going, I ended up asking for an Archer and Olive journal for Christmas. And that is a journal I used all year and I love it so much. So bullet journaling as a concept is not a favorite this year, even though I did enjoy bullet journaling this year. The journal itself is what I want to mention. So this is the Archer and Olive A6, A5 journal. I honestly am not quite sure what size this is, but it is an Archer and Olive dotted notebook and I love it so much. The Archer and Olive journal is just so high quality. The actual outside is really nice. The spine in mine is a little like bent and wonky, but that's because I literally open this journal at least once a day, typically multiple times a day. And that didn't really start until like a few months ago. So it kind of kept intact a majority of the year and it still is intact like it doesn't it's not falling apart or anything it's just a little a little wonky I don't know if you can really tell but yeah it's still like together it's not falling apart really and the pages of the journal itself are super thick and super high quality I actually used coffee as like paint um, like watercolor paint on some of my spreads and um, it kind of like warped the pages a little bit but not nearly as bad as I would have assumed. It definitely held together really nicely. So yeah, if you journal, bullet journal, any type of journaling, I would highly recommend checking out the Archer and Olive journals. They are a bit more expensive. I think this one was like 30 or 35 dollars, but they are super high quality. And if you're someone who loves journaling and keeps up with it throughout the whole year, like me, definitely would recommend investing in this. And now I want to mention a type of journaling that I started this year. So I started another journal, this one right here. Um, this was gifted to me by my friend for Christmas last year, and I wasn't quite sure what I was going to use it for because I had already gotten this one for Christmas for my bullet journaling, and I was like, what can I do with this journal? And I actually saw Chloe from Books with Chloe or Journal with Chloe do a 2019 life journal flip through, and I was like, oh, this is really cool. So basically, she does a bunch of spreads just like 
on things that she's done, on movies, books, TV shows, um, anything that she just really liked, she did spreads on, and that is kind of what I wanted this to be. So I actually haven't done that many spreads, but it is something that I want to try and do more of in the new year. So, for example, this is one of my older spreads, and it's not very good, but this is a spread on the Miss Americana documentary. I did this one for a BTS online concert. I did this for a BTS music video. Because of the lack of things I was able to do this year, this basically was just like a BTS and Taylor Swift journal. But I did do some on books as well, so that's an Ember in the Ashes spread. Um, I did a very late 22nd birthday spread and things like that. Like I just think it's really cool to have this journal to do whatever I want, whatever kind of spreads I want to do. Um, I just really liked having that freedom and just being able to journal about whatever I want. So yeah, I didn't get too far into this journal this year. I was wanting to complete it in the whole year, but seeing as there wasn't a whole lot going on in my life to journal about, um, I didn't get that far, but I'm hoping to do more of this type of journaling in the new year in 2021. Oh, that sounds weird. I almost just said 2020. <laughs> 2021. Hoping to continue doing this type of journaling in the new year. But yeah, this was something super fun and super relaxing to do this year, which we all know we needed something like that to get us through. <laughs> and on the last kind of topic of stationery, I got a lot of stationery this year, lots of different pens, washi tapes, things like that. But I wanted to mention these specific pens. So these are the Micron pens. I don't know if they have a specific name. Uh, they're the Pigma Micron pens, and this is in the size 08, this one is in 05, and this one is in 01. And I actually got two of these from my friend who gave me the black journal as well. She gave me a couple of these with this journal as a present, and I really, really loved them. And then I bought a thicker one on my own, the 08 one, and I use these all the time. They're such good pens for journaling. I know that these are quite a popular pen, so if you are into journaling, you've probably heard of these. They are a bit more expensive, but they work really well and they've lasted me a, a long time. These two, it's been almost a year that I've had them and they're not drying out at all. So definitely would recommend they're super high quality pens and they have a bunch of different sizes. So you can get a variety of thickness or thinness in different pens. I don't know if any of that made sense, but definitely would recommend. I know they're super popular, but I definitely liked these and tried them for the first time this year and loved them. So the next couple of things I want to mention are a specific type of makeup product. So it's all eyebrow things, which is a little strange. The first thing I want to mention is the CoverGirl, uh, what is this? Ultra Fine Brow Pencil. I have the shade Soft Brown, and this is very similar to the Anastasia Brow Wiz Brow Pencil. Um, I will say it is a bit more like intense. Like I feel like the Anastasia one, you can get a very soft look. This one is a bit more intense at first, but it's very comparable. And I tried this for the first time this year and I really like it. I'm always kind of looking for a brow pencil dupe for the Anastasia one because that one is a bit expensive. I only buy that one when it's on sale because on sale it's still like $16. So that's still a lot for a brow pencil, but I've always was looking for a cheaper one. And CoverGirl actually went cruelty free somewhat recently. It was like a couple of years ago, I think. So I've been wanting to try more of CoverGirl stuff. And I actually got this, I think, from my mom. And I'm super excited about it. I do really like it. It's super good. I think it's definitely comparable to the Anastasia one. It's just exciting to find a brow pencil that's cheaper than the Anastasia one. So I definitely would recommend checking this out. Uh, definitely was using this the very rare times I was doing my makeup this year, basically when I was filming, that was it. And then speaking of Anastasia, I have two brow gels. These were in a kit thing that, again, my mom got me for Christmas with a brow pencil and then these two gels. So this is one that is like tinted. So this is the soft brown shade gel. And then this one is just their clear one. And both of these I really like. If you want kind of more um, color in your brows or you just want to kind of do something really quick, this brow, like the brown gel, the color gel is really good. And if you really want your eyebrows to like stay in place and not move, the clear gel is very serious and it works great. <laughs> I definitely think if, you know, we can start going to events like concerts, things like that, where I'm going to need my makeup to kind of stay in place, I definitely will use the clear gel because this keeps your brows looking the way you had them when you first did them. They keep the brow hairs in place. It's just a very strong and powerful gel without being like too crunchy, which just sounds gross, but like sometimes when you put brow gel on, like your eyebrows feel like hard, <laughs> but this doesn't really do that. And this definitely doesn't do that. That's what I put in my brows today. And it doesn't really feel like that at all. So definitely would recommend these brow gels if that's something you're interested in. <laughs> But seeing as I wasn't really wearing much makeup this year, I didn't really have much else to talk about. But I did really kind of get into skincare this year. Um, I mean, I've always been into my skincare routine, but 
I feel like I kind of tried to stay on top of it and it became really important for me to stay on top of this year. I feel like it would have been very easy for me to just be like, oh, I don't feel like doing my skincare and just not taking care of myself because of the mental state that I was in this whole year, as I'm sure a lot of you can relate. Um, but something that made me very excited to keep up with my skincare is my skincare fridge. <laughs> so my skincare fridge is definitely a favorite. This was also a Christmas gift last year and I set it up like a couple of months ago. It took me a while to finally set it up, but now that I have it set up, I love it so much. It's such an excessive thing that is so not necessary, but I think it's really fun and it's really nice to put on cooling moisturizer every night and just doing nice skincare that's nice and cool. I don't know. It's just one of those like little nice bonuses when I do my skincare every night. <laughs> also putting sheet masks in there. It's really nice when you put those on and they're just nice and cooling. I just really enjoy it. Um, it's again very excessive but I really enjoy it and it's made keeping up with my skincare a lot more fun um, especially like I said this year when I could have very easily just been like not feeling it and not wanting to keep up with it. So yeah my skincare fridge was another favorite and I feel like this year when I wasn't wearing makeup nearly as much as I have in the past because I wasn't going anywhere um, I really wanted to focus more on my skincare and getting my skin to a good place so I really enjoyed using my skincare fridge this year. I think it, I don't know if it helped my skin, but it made it a fun experience and a fun way to kind of keep up with my skincare. And the last thing I want to mention is probably something that is going to show up on a lot of people's favorites videos of 2020, and that is Animal Crossing. I should have gone and grabbed the game, but I didn't think of it. So I'll just put a picture on the screen. Um, but Animal Crossing, what a perfect time for this game to come out. I think this came out in March or April, it came out kind of at the very beginning of quarantine and everybody kind of trying to stay home as much as possible. And having this really cute and fun game to play while we were all home, I think made us all like more excited to stay home as much as possible or gave us something to do while we were home. I definitely was kind of late to the Animal Crossing thing because I've never played Animal Crossing before. So when we got the new one, I like didn't know what I was supposed to be doing. But now I'm in the midst of reorganizing my island. We're terraforming. We're changing it up for the first time. And I just, I think it's so cute and so wholesome and just such a happy and perfect game for this year. I think this is like the perfect game that came out this year that we all kind of needed. We all kind of needed something a bit mindless, but just really cute and really happy and positive. You know, there's nothing too hard about it. There's not like rules. There's not like a lot of hard things that you have to do. It's just super fun and cute. And I think that that is like the perfect game that we all needed this year. So yeah, I know that this is probably not the most unique thing. I'm sure this is going to show up in a lot of people's favorites of the year lists or videos or whatever people are doing, but I had to mention it because I became such a big Animal Crossing fan this year. I played it so much. It brought me a lot of joy and a lot of laughs this year because it's just so cute, so I had to mention it. But yeah, I think that that is everything I wanted to mention. Obviously, this isn't everything. I think that the year has been, it's had its highlights, it's had its good memories as well, even though it has been a very stressful and weird year. There have been a lot of good things as well. I know for me, a lot of new friends came into my life this year because of this channel. I met so many people through creating videos and I'm very grateful for those people. I'm also very grateful for the people who subscribed to me this year. I actually reached a thousand subscribers this year, which I did not think was going to happen. I was kind of reaching for like 500 subscribers by the end of the year, but I never really wanted like a certain goal because I just didn't want it to be something that I got down about if I didn't reach it. But this is way above and beyond what I thought I'd reach by the end of the year. So thank you to anyone who subscribed to me this year, who watched my videos this year. Um, it really means a lot. It made this year a little bit more happy and fun for me being able to talk to you guys through it all. But yeah, I think that that is it for my 2020 favorites video. Again, like I said, filming this December 3rd, so there could be other things that happen throughout the year that become favorites, but I'm sure you will know, you know, if BTS or Taylor Swift do something, safe to assume it's a favorite of the year. <laughs> but other than that, that is going to complete my 2020 favorites video. So don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe down below if you have not already. Also, don't forget to click the little bell notification to be notified every time I upload. But other than that, thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye.